to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 13. We welcome you today to our study of the book of Ecclesiastes. If you don't have your Bible with you, we want to tell you, have you pause for just a minute, locate your Bible, get it out, have it ready, as we're going to look to the book of Ecclesiastes, the Word of God, to understand what the real meaning and purpose of life is all about. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. We want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Churches of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to learn more about God's Word or the church, you've got questions about salvation, you'll find people there who'd be happy to open up and discuss the scriptures with you. And so please visit their assembly on Sunday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night for Bible study. You'd be well taken care of. They would be, treat you with kindness and love there at the Lord's Church. And so we want to encourage you to visit that. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we want to encourage you to check out our website, The Gospel of Christ. Dot com is our website. From there, you can access all our material. We have that hundreds of lessons on Old and New Testament books and topical studies. And from our website, you can access all our material free of charge. Good information, audio lessons, video lessons, written material, study questions, just a wide variety of good Bible study material that would help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. And as always, everything we offer is free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'll be glad to send that to you free of charge. We'll even take care of the postage if you need a DVD or CD of that. And as always, we encourage folks to download our app from both the Play, uh, but the Google and the Android, Apple and Android stores, and that's a great tool to study God's Word from your smartphone as well. Today we're thinking about probably one of the one of the biggest questions that's ever asked. What's the meaning of life? Why am I here? What's life all about? What's my purpose? What am I to accomplish? Why am I on this terrestrial ball? You see, in Ecclesiastes, there is this, this quest, this search for meaning in life. Let me illustrate. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 is the answer to the question. Fear God, keep His commandments, this is the whole duty of man. If Ecclesiastes 12, 13 is the answer, what's the question? You see, if I can understand what the, the major quest or question is in this book, it'll help me to understand the book as a whole. And so here's the question. How? In what or how do I find purpose and meaning and fulfillment in this life? Ecclesiastes is Solomon's, the son of David. It's his quest for meaning or purpose in this life. He tried everything under the sun, and this is what conclusion he came to. There, there are some things throughout the book that if we can really kind of grasp, will help us to better understand it. For example, the key word that you'll find throughout the book is the word vanity. This occurs 37 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. For example, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2, Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Well, what is this vanity? And what in the world is he talking about? All is vanity. 
Well, friend, vanity is something that is meaningless or purposeless. It's it's vain and it has no real meaning. Uh, chapter 1, verse 3, one of the key questions, what profit has a man from all his labor which he labors under the sun? What purpose or meaning is there in, in all of life's ventures? Why am I here? For what purpose do I do the things that I do? Why do I get up and go to my job? Why do I do these things? What is it all really about? When you tie this idea in, the vanity with the key phrase, the key phrase in the book is the phrase, under the sun. That a phrase occurs 29 times in this short little book. And, and under the sun kind of represents earth life. Under the sun uh, represents life that is apart from God. Earth life apart from God. Uh, under the sun kind of considers the affairs of this life as an end in and of themselves and not a means. As such, they're vain. Of course, this is in contrast with when you view the affairs of this life in view of God and the Bible. And of course, the scriptures teach they are not vain. Then I want you to consider another key phrase that Solomon will use in this book. He'll say something is like, grasping or trying to catch the wind. What does that represent? That's an utter impossibility. It's something that's useless. You can see the wind, you can feel the wind, but you can't catch it. It's utter uselessness or impossibility. And so when you think about the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon is trying everything he can to find meaning, to find fulfillment on life under the sun that isn't like trying to catch the wind, that isn't vain or worthless. One writer, T.B. Larimore, identified five attempts Solomon made in Ecclesiastes at fulfillment, which utterly failed. He tried to find fulfillment in earthly wisdom. Solomon said, I, I look for studies, meanings, learning, and he found it was madness. In earthly wisdom, by itself, he could find no fulfillment. He tried to find meaning and fulfillment in wealth, a mass accumulation of all the wealth. No meaning or fulfillment in that. In revelry and pleasure and lust, the multiplicity of wives he had, the living it up in pleasure, utterly vainless, uh, vain, worthless, like trying to catch the wind. He tried it in power. He tried it in communing with nature. And all of that, Solomon would say, is vanity and vexation of spirit. Well, what does Ecclesiastes help us with then? Guy in Woods succinctly stated, the purpose in Ecclesiastes is this. Ecclesiastes reveals the emptiness of life apart from God that we might learn how rich and full life is with Him. When you read much of Ecclesiastes, it's kind of a dark book in some ways because Solomon is looking and he's not finding. He's seeking out this and it leads him to no good. He tries this and it's utterly worthless. And so Ecclesiastes reveals to us how empty Solomon's life was apart from God so that we could realize how rich and full life is with God at the center of it. And so let's think today from the book of Ecclesiastes about the real meaning and purpose of life. What is life really all about? Let's get some insights that will lead us to the ultimate conclusion. First of all, I need to learn to enjoy life for what it is. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2, and I want you to look at verse number 24. Notice what the scripture here says. The Bible records these words. Nothing is better for a man that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in this labor, this also I saw was from the hand of God. 
As part of the insight, Solomon makes this quest, and as he learns things along the way, he learns you've got to enjoy life for what it is. Nothing's better for a man than to eat, drink, be merry, enjoy the work of his hand. Sometimes it's the little things in life that bring us real joy and happiness. Our friends, our family, just enjoying the things we have in this life. It doesn't have to be big and grand and, and magnificent. We just simply need to enjoy life for what it is. A second insight Solomon learns along the way is you've got to see it in view of eternity. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Now listen to this. Also, He has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. As Solomon starts to kind of bring the focus in a little closer every time, we now look at it through eternity's lens. Enjoy life. Doesn't have to be big, grand, and marvelous. Just enjoy the things you have. And then God has put, listen to this, God has put eternity in our hearts. I can't figure out everything. My, my mind just can't sometimes grasp all of all of the things about God and, and His name. There's just things that are too wonderful, as Paul will say. But God has placed the ability within man to understand eternity. God's put eternity in our hearts. What's that mean? I realize this is not all there is. This life, the things of this life, they're temporary, right? The earth and all that's in it is one day going to be burned up with a fervent heat. 2 Peter 3, verses 9 through 12. My fleshly life is temporary. 70, maybe 80 years. Psalm 90, verses 10 through 12 says. But there is another side. I'm going to cross out of this life to the other side where eternity resides. John 5, 28 and 29, Jesus said, All who are in the graves will one day come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. The righteous shall go away into eternal life, the unrighteous eternal condemnation, Matthew 25 Verse 46, and so not only do I look at meaning in life through enjoying the things God's given me, but I've got to look at it through the lens of eternity. There's more to life than just the here and now. Another insight that helps us to enjoy the meaning of life is to realize the value of the people God puts in our life. Look in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not, the Bible says, quickly broken. I need to appreciate the people that God has put into my life. You can see in this passage, God never intended for us to do it alone. Isn't that what Genesis 2 says? God saw it was not good for man to be alone. Genesis 2, verse 18. And so part of living a life with meaning and purpose and finding the best way to live life is to appreciate the people, our friends, our family, our spouses, our children, our church family. Realize the value of the people that God puts into our lives to help us, to encourage us, to build us up. And then as Solomon makes this quest, as he makes this trek toward meaning and purpose in life, a fourth insight we learn is this. We learn about the, the fleeting, futile nature 
of earthly pleasures. Open your Bible, if you would, to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. The Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 5.15, As he came from his mother's womb, naked shall he return, to go as he came. Now notice, And he shall take nothing from this labor which he may carry away in his hand. Doesn't that sound a lot like Job? In Job chapter 1, toward the end, verses 19 following, Job said, it's evident we brought nothing in this life. We'll take nothing with us from this life. Uh, Jesus said it with food and clothing. These things we shall be content. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Friend, I, I, I've got to realize the fleeting nature of these pleasures. We're not going to take it with us. It, it's not going to last beyond this life. From it, it, it perishes with the using, and it's meant to be is not meant to be taken forever. And so, whatever the pleasure may be, lustly pleasure, uh, physical pleasure, men, uh, social, mental pride, whatever it may be, that's fleeting. That's not going to last. That, that that's not what's going to give you fulfillment. And I hope you'll listen real carefully, because a lot of people try to make this their meaning and purpose of life. How much fun can I have? How much power can I have? How many toys can I have? How much money can I have in my bank account? All these pleasures and passions, I need to try every one of them and live them to the fullest. Friend, that's so fleeting. And that will never. Solomon tried it all. If he had it, if anybody had it to the max, he did. And remember what he said? It's vanity and vexation of spirit. It, it, it's useless for finding out what life is really about. It will leave you empty and void of real meaning and purpose. All right, another insight Solomon learns along the way. Learn to trust God in this life and in the next. Open your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And I want to direct your attention to what the Scripture says in chapter 7. Look at a couple of passages with me. Verse number 13. Consider the work of God. Who can make straight what God has made crooked? Look at verse number 20. For there is not a just man on, the, on earth who does good and does not sin. Now watch verse 29. Truly, this only have I found. God made man upright, but they sought out many schemes against him. I can't put my trust in man. He, he's not perfect. His ways are not right. But who can take and make what God is straight crooked or vice versa? If God has said it, that's the way it's going to be. What does that mean? Instead of putting my trust in man... Instead of putting my trust in, in other people or other sources or other books of men, I need to put my trust in God and His Word. What God's done, that's what's going to stand the test of time. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. Matthew 24, verses 34 through 36, God is eternal. Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2, and man has a spirit that's going to live somewhere forever. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. What else does Solomon learn along the way as an insight toward the meaning in life? Solomon learns this. Sometimes because of the laws that have been made to govern this life, because of the natural laws, good and bad, happen to all people alike. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 with me. I want you to look in chapter 9, verse 2, and then we'll look in verse number 11. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 2. All things come alike to all. One event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good, the clean, and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who who does not sacrifice. Look at verse number 11. Solomon says, I returned and saw under the sun 
that the race is not too swift, the battle not too strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but listen to this, but time and chance happen to them all. We live in a life that's governed by natural laws. We all here are reminded of the phraseology, God makes His sun, His rain, His sun to shine on the just, His rain to fall on the just and the unjust. In a world where there are natural laws, good and bad happen to all people alike. Sometimes good, righteous people have bad things happen. Sometimes bad people have good things happen in this life. And oftentimes the Jews would take this as an indication of right with God or wrong with God. And friend, that's, that's not always the case. Think about Job, for example. Job's three friends, if we can use that word, after they found out about all the calamity that Job had faced, they basically come to Job and for 30 chapters nearly, they say to him, you've sinned, you've done something really bad, otherwise all these bad things wouldn't happen. And that's just not the case. The devil was active working against Job, even though the Bible declares Job was a good man, upright man, blameless man, and he had bad things happen to him. And so we don't take the good and the bad as an indicator either way. We examine our lives and try to live according to God's will either way. But with these insights in mind, what then is life really all about? If we could boil life down to one grand purpose and meaning, what would it be? Friend, I want to direct your attention to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. After we've looked at everything Solomon's tried, after we have saw his insights working him toward this grand conclusion, let's see the conclusion together. What's life about? Look with me in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verses 13 and 14. Solomon says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Why? For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Solomon made a quest for meaning. He came to the ultimate conclusion, and here's what it is. What's the purpose of your life, and what's the purpose of mine? What is a life that has real meaning and fulfillment? Fear God. That means to reverence, respect, and honor God as God, who He is, and keep His commandments. To love God and to obey Him, that's what life is all about. Jesus was asked a similar question. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or someone came to Jesus a little later in his ministry, and they said, Teacher, what is the greatest of, of all the commandments? What's the greatest? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love God above all else and to follow Him. That's what life is all about. Why is that the purpose of life? Well, here's the why. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Friend, whether I realize it or not, I'm going to stand before God and I am a creation of God. I am accountable to God and I will have to give an account to Him on the day of judgment. Thus, I need to love Him and fear Him and live in accord with His will. And so, Think of everything Solomon tried. He tried to find meaning in natural science. And here's what he said. Nothing new under the sun. Wisdom and the schools of philosophy. Vanity. Wealth beyond measure. No profit under the sun. All forms of pleasure. Utter emptiness. Materialism magnified more than you could ima imagine. Wisdom, madness, and folly. What about power and honor, fleeting, building projects? Solomon said, you can build it, but it's going to be left to somebody else. Friend, the, the grand idea 
that we need to think about and consider is that in this life, we need to make sure that we put our trust and our hope in Almighty God. And so, friend, here's what I'm asking you to consider with me today. What's the meaning and purpose in my life and yours? What's your life? Well, maybe, maybe you feel sometimes like Solomon does. There's a lot of people. Suicide rates indicate that there's a lot of people who don't know why they're here, don't know where they're going, and they just get tired of it sometimes. Friend, listen carefully to me. You have a meaning. You have a purpose that will fulfill your life to the max. And that purpose is to obey God and to keep His commandments. If you will love God, if you will put God at the center of your life, if God's at the center and everything else I do comes out from that center point and is about God and loving others, Friend, what a joy to hope that will be in every person's life. And so we ask you today, have you found that life with real meaning and purpose? Listen to these words. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. John 14, 6. If you've never become a Christian, we encourage you to do that today. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? John chapter 8, verse 24, would you be willing to turn from a life of sin? Acts chapter 3, verse 19, repent and turn again. Would you make the good confession? I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, and would you, to have every sin washed away, would you be baptized for the remission of your sins, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then rising up out of that watery grave, would you walk in newness of life every day with a life that has real meaning and real purpose? Join us next time as we'll study more from the Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.